everyone, and welcome back <laughs> to You Had Me to Eat. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Season two. But I'm bum. Jules, are you ready for season two? I am. I, I've missed you. Although I I'm, didn't see you last week. I just <laughs> saw you last week in person in physical Live. form. I yeah. know. Yeah. Yes. Which was great. I was so happy. It was wild. Uh, yeah. For those of you who have not been following us on the uh, Instagram, uh, Jules, which is what we're going to talk about today in our first episode back on season two, such an important topic, uh, sent one of her children off to college and uh, real. happened to actually pick a college within my state, a lovely university. I love it so much. So I had an opportunity to drive and actually see her family uh, drop off the last kid of school. Bye bye. Yeah. I didn't see her cry, um, but I got the feeling. Yes. You know, you could feel the emotions. Wonderful. Yes. So, Jules, would you like to kick us off today and talk about how? First of all, wild it is that you're old enough to have like your last child go to school. Mm. Second off, that she chose an amazing university. Like eight, so yeah, that's it. I yeah. don't know how you did it. <laughs> um, how she chose an amazing university in my home state, and how weird mm-hmm. it is that she's across the country from you. Mm-hmm. And then also, of course, how she is managing with the specialty diet. And with uh, having a mom who's gluten free visiting her all the time. Yeah, well, there's so many questions there, Erica. So many questions. It could be a whole episode of itself, I which know. it will be. I know. Well, the tis the season, and I know so many other people are sending their their children off uh, last week, this week, and um, and actually even into September. I have some yeah. friends whose whose kids don't start college until September. So um, it's a tis the season for back to school of all ages. But right now, I guess we're focusing just on the college situation, but yeah, it's crazy. I can't believe I have someone who's old enough to be in college, but um, it, yeah, it's, it's an interesting selection situation, like how they pick where they want to go. I know a lot of, a lot of people are picking based upon, you know, how friendly the Mm -hmm. universities are towards dietary restrictions. That was not our situation. My daughter, has a dairy allergy and hers is a little bit easier to plan around than some other people's. But I have a friend whose son has celiac and that actually did figure into the mix. We, you know, helped a little bit in uh, deciding which schools to go to for him. And um, I think it's great that there are schools now that are actually actively, Mm -hmm. you know, seeking out students, you know, based upon that, their ability to serve that, that student population. And it was neat because that didn't really figure into our decision yet. When we landed on campus, we were immediately, you know, we did want to find out like, how Mm -hmm. is she going to be able to find, you know, the food that she needs in in the um, dining halls and things. And they have an app there at, this is at university of Arizona and they have an app and you can just plug it right in and say, these are the things that I can't eat. And every single meal, they'll tell you all the, 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 the um, foods that you can eat and they gray out the foods that you can't based upon what your dietary restrictions are. And they'll list every single ingredient in every single food item there. Amazing. And can you imagine? I mean, I, you know, I, when I've been posting about this on Instagram and Facebook and other places, I've had all these people DM me about their children's college experiences in years past. Mm-hmm. And how different it is now than then, you yeah, know, yeah. and I mean, just how many advances have been made. And obviously we're still talking about some schools are way better at it than others. Um, and it's so much easier with something like that. I mean, this is how these kids, this is their language, right? Like, give me an app, put it in my hands. I'll do it myself. You know, I don't yeah. want to go talk to somebody, although that's still what we advocate for people to do. And and that's what she and her roommate were going to do. Her roommate has um, celiac. And so they were talking to the dietary, um, the special um, dietary um, services people there and the dining hall services people there as well, because they need to make sure there's no cross contact, even though they list everything out, still have to cross all the, the T's and make sure everything is, is taken care of for her. So you still have to go to extra efforts there, but it, you know, there's some of these universities are just knocking it out of the park. They're doing such a great job yeah. for these kids and they should, because yeah. you know, these kids they're are landing so on campus money. and they're paying. So, 
I'll tell you so how much money they're paying. Much money. <laughs> they're paying so much money because I'm paying it. It's very much money. Um, but the food, I mean, goodness, those those dining halls, they are getting some really good food there. And yeah. to be able to see all the ingredients and to see what they can and cannot eat, it's, I mean, it's awesome. But that yeah. doesn't also doesn't replace the fact that, you know, we also uh, armed her with a toaster oven and refrigerator and all of that in, in their room so that they can also, you know, buy extra food and make food there um, for themselves. And there's also a kitchen right down the hall. And so they, they have plans for all kinds of other food that they're going to supplement with. But, you know, they're set. I'm, I'm really I'm not worried for them. And so yeah. when you hear about some of these nightmare scenarios where people are in other schools that just are not getting it. It's just like you, you could be doing so much more and should be doing so much more. Um, yeah. Spoken um, just released some of their best like dining hall reviews or whatever, like mm-hmm. the best dining halls. And of course you have A is on there, which is why when she said that she was choosing that, I'm like, Oh, easy peasy. Like people mm-hmm. have told me how easy it is for years to be, gluten-free. Yeah. not just now, like years ago when it was difficult still across the country. And so many places have now updated either having a free from dining hall, a free from area, um, yep. But I just went, when I was at Teen Summit, I just did the big dining hall. Um, I did the big off-to-college disability services, like what you can get with a disability and, you know, going to disability services, going to the dining hall, um, like the, not restaurant services, but dining hall dining services. services. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then also seeing a dietitian who usually works with dining services. Right. We actually pulled up. Um, a couple different examples at the teen summit and like walk through here's on the website where you would go to even check it out and who you need to talk to. And here's Mm -hmm. her direct email and her phone number. And they make it so easy to do that because when I was in college, Oh my God, no, like, of course not. Like back in when you're riding dinosaurs to school, like that's not what we had. We had an omelet bar. And I think that's what I ate every single day that I was there. Yeah. No, I mean, as I, I was, um, first got sick with celiac when I was in college. Of course, they didn't know that's what it was then, but I'm, I'm convinced it's because all I ate, I mean, just put me over the edge. Like I, I had, you know, pizza, bagels, pasta, and more bagels. Like yeah. that's pretty much all I ate in college. And when I was breezing through the cafeteria on my way late to class. All I did was just grab a bagel on my way mm-hmm. out. I never sat down and had a meal. I'm mean, a vegetarian, so I wasn't going to like sit and eat, you know, whatever sort of meat Prime sandwich rib. they were offering mm-hmm. or something like that. So I was just like, I'll have a plain bagel. It was like the worst diet. I was, I'm sure I was just nutritionally compromised six ways <laughs> to Sunday, but yeah. I, I, what did I know? <laughs> you know? And so I, you know, that's, that's what I did. That's all I ate. And um, if I had the options available to me now, but they have, my gosh, it's just, just, it's amazing. But um, yeah, I was, I was really impressed and thrilled that she had so many options. And speaking of which, we had so many options in Tucson, you and I. I am eating a hair or or something. It's like in my, (laughs) it's been in my face this whole time and it's really bumming me out, but I can't see it. So I'm just like feeling around my face this whole time you're talking. I'm like feeling for an invisible spider web yeah. and I just feel like there's well, a hair on my face stuck in my contact. Guarantee it's cat hair the way you and I live with our cats around us at all times. Oh, absolutely. I actually yeah. f- I pulled a cat hair out of my contact lens the other day and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Matt said we lived in a frat house because he came out of his bedroom and he stepped in vomit right away. And then there was a turd on the floor from our old cat. And he's just like, <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing here? Anyway, they're great. Good times. Um, Good times. So I Good can't times. see out of my left eye, but like that's fine. So Tucson, Jules, it's great. You don't need to see anything. Um, We're recording oh a my podcast. God. Tucson, I love Tucson it. Tucson was excellent. I mean, there were, I mean, I ate at two dedicated gluten free places, and one of them with you, and they were great. And then the other places that we ate had gluten free menu items, and I felt confident after speaking with them that things were on the up and up and I, you know, was fine there and the food was delicious. Uh, And I mean, it was just, it was lovely. I was so impressed and the town was just 
Um, I love it. It was great. It was so pretty. The architecture is so pretty. And we went to that Sonoran um, Desert Museum. <laughs> so <laughs> we all melted into puddles. But it was it was really nice. It was really Dear pretty. reader, it was 107 <laughs> degrees out. And she's like, we're, we're, gonna, we're at a museum. Come meet us. And I'm like, okay. Or she's like, we're at a museum. I'll meet you later. I'm like, well, I'll come meet you at the museum. What museum? I was thinking That was an a key indoor point, museum. by the way. I yeah. did not say come meet us. I it was, was not pulling you into yes. the void into which I was, like, puddling. Because so. halfway through, I'm like, I think this is outside. And I'm wearing yeah. normal clothing. Yeah. And I get there, and they're all wearing, like, athletic, like, itty-bitty, teeny, weeny, whatever, full of mm-hmm. sunscreen. And I'm just, like, <laughs> the palest version of myself without a hat. And I'm just like... I should not and be you outdoors. Had a fresh tattoo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that has now since not done well since oh, that day. No. Um, I'm so, so I'm like, I love this place. This place is the most amazing outdoor wildlife. It's so beautiful and like so gorgeous with vistas overlooking Tucson. It's in the middle of the Soro National Forest. Gorgeous. But it's very hot and everyone's like, I'm so happy to be here. It's so lovely outside. I'm like, this is awful. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you doing this to me? This is horrible. And you're I like, was, again, not trying to do it to you. I was just, I thank you. You know, we were, we were there. So it pretty happened though. to be, you know, hotter than Hades, but we had no control over that. And that's what we were there. So what do like, you do? You're in Tucson. You, that, you do the Tucson things. When you went there, I was like, this is precisely why so many tourists die hiking in Phoenix because you're like, this is wonderful. This is great. I'll be outdoors. And everyone's like, why would you do that? And you're like, I'm not from here. Like, oh, (laughs) this is why people get like stuck on Camelback Mountain and need to be like medevac when it's like 114. To be fair, we were very close to water fountains and air conditioned building the entire it's time. True. We just sort of like did circles around it. We were not on Camelback Mountain. Not that stupid. <sighs> if you had, would have been like, we we're water. going hiking, I would have been like, I'm not surprised. No, and I should no, go ahead we and are not. call no. paramedics in advance now. <laughs> Notify them. Yeah, no. No, we weren't. And, and But y'all had was... like Camelbacks and sunscreen. You all had it down. So you guys mm-hmm. were good. I was I w- the one I was woefully unprepared. I was wearing a hat. You were. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, we should make that as our little uh, avatar thing for this episode. Just yeah. a picture of us. I'm in. With me in the hat. <laughs> you and Matt's there. like, me Matt got hat. back and Matt's like, you got sun. I'm like, yeah, sure did. Because I put on <laughs> sunscreen, but like not right around my uh, hairline. It's like my um, whole hairline is just like bright red. It's like I'm wearing a skin mask because it's boy. all burned. So, yeah. Again, lovely. not my fault. But so I beautiful. Do, but I do take it as a sign of how much you love me that you wanted to spend as much time with us as possible, that you even went out in 106 degree temperatures. Anytime you can get me in a zoo, I'm in. So you're like, yeah. I'm at the museum. I'm like, I'm in. I want to talk about yeah. uh, natural wildlife. So, sure. Yeah. Yeah. The best comment ever, though, was when we went into the hummingbird aviary and you're like, I'm not throwing shade here, but there are more <laughs> hummingbirds in my backyard. <laughs> That are in the hummingbird area yeah. because it was so hot. The hummingbirds didn't even want to come out. <laughs> no. But also to be fair, I have a very intense and aggressive population of hummingbirds in my backyard right now that now go up to me when I'm sitting on the hammock and they're like, what's up? You're in my backyard. I'm like, bro, it's my backyard. And they're like, want to fight? And then the <laughs> other two come and they have hummingbird fights all the time. So I do actually see a lot of hummingbirds in my backyard. Yeah. But, um, mm-hmm. Gorgeous. It's like the best combination of like a zoo, an aviary, and also like the botanical gardens, which is one of my favorites here because I and love... And an aquarium. <sighs> Those eels were so freaky. <laughs> I've never also, seen eels do that. I've an aquarium. I've dived in multiple places and I've never seen eels do that before. Yeah. It's a desert museum. And Only like, in a desert do eels Also some more eels. That. We don't know why we have them, but they're in this like little <laughs> side room and we're like, okay, okay, there you go. <laughs> and they're really freaked out too, which is why they're yeah. digging in the sand. 
Yeah. So that's what Charles and I did. Yeah. Um, but we had a lovely, a lovely um, lunch slash dinner meal at a dedicated bakery, which is one of my favorite places in Tucson. It's um, LGBTQ friendly, super amazing people that run it. Like so, so great. And their food's amazing. They have a ton of vegetarian and vegan options, which is why I like it. Um, Gourmet Girls Gluten-Free is great too. They just Mm -hmm. don't have as many um, vegan options. No. So if any vegan comes, I'm always say, yeah, I always say to go to dedicated. Yeah. But there's like a a gluten-free Chinese food place down in Tucson. And I've always, I have had their food before at an event, a gluten-free event that I did down there, but I haven't been in forever. And like, of course they have all of like the, Fox restaurant concepts that we have here in Phoenix. It's like flower child and like true food and, you know, all the things that we have that are safe for um, people who are gluten free. They also have down there. So I don't know. That's why I love Arizona. I mean, it's horrible here and I can't go outside ever, but we have so many great things here. But when you do venture outside, you eat It's well. lovely. And yeah. There's so many mm-hmm. sororos. It's great. Yeah. Um, ah. Was, yeah. that, I was just fascinated by all the cacti. It was really cool to see. But I'll Very be spending a lot of home. time in uh, visiting back and forth to Tucson, apparently, in the next four years. So, Yeah. So did you um, – one thing about the dorm or the residence hall that I think is interesting is she was allowed to have a toaster oven mm-hmm. or wild we weren't even allowed to have microwaves because people would blow stuff up all the time. Yeah, so. no, they, they let them have various things. They can't have candles. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's interesting. Hmm. Certain dorms so, and certain colleges have different rules. Right. Like, you know, other kids, we were looking at the list of things that they could and could not have. And maybe other dorms wouldn't let you do different things because uh, this is a very new dorm. Like. I mean, I think it was less than five years old or something. I mean, it looked brand new. Everything looked brand new there. It yeah. was just, it's yeah. beautiful. It looked I mean. like an, she's in an apartment. Yeah. It had oh, more 100%. storage. She that had so much had more storage. storage than our houses she, combined. Oh, yeah. Her, she had so much storage. She has leftover storage. Not Her cool. water closet is bigger than my entire bathroom. And, and cool. none of these are hyperbole, dear reader. I mean, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not feeling sorry for her. I mean, my dorm was, I think, built in the 50s. My house was built in the 40s. I have Mm -hmm. no storage in this house because there wasn't a lot of things and gadgets in the 40s. No. Um, Same with my dorm in the 50s. And it was probably not built to sustain like one toaster oven fire, much less 13 Mm -hmm. floors of toaster ovens. Uh, So we weren't allowed to have anything. Um, But I was just like, she's like, and here's where my toaster oven is. And I'm like, you have a toaster oven. Is that legal? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, and then, you know, one of the things that I, I've been posting about, like, these are the things I recommend that, you know, you take, like, a refrigerator, maybe, you know, a, a little um, kettle, mini waffle iron, like, all these things are in my back-to-school um, college post. And it's funny because a lot of people are like, oh, my gosh, the mini waffle iron's the best. That, mm-hmm. you know, that's my kid or me, you know, I, that's been my favorite appliance that I've had at college in my dorm. And, and I thought that's really cool. Like, you know, people, you just see them rolling out of bed and like whipping up. Cause you know, like with my pancake mix, you just dump it in a bowl with some, you know, a little bit of liquids, you know, water and applesauce or whatever, and just like mix it up. And then you could just see, just pouring those off and making yeah. them for people and be so easy, even if you don't have the kitchen right down the hall. And that's, that's kind of cool. So I, I'm, I like hearing from people that they're doing those things and they're having a good time with it. So, yeah, that's wild, man. I can't even imagine if I had to go back to school now and live in a dorm and be like, what am I allowed to have? And what can I make? It'd be like, that's why there were so many like cooking in the dorm and what you can make in a coffee pot and what you can make in it. It's like traveling. It's like mm-hmm. eating out of a hotel room. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely different. And I think what's unique about college and being gluten-free is Every single university is so different. Like while you say go to dining services and disability office and dietitian, some may have some combined. So when you even go to talk to them initially, it's different. They have different dining options for every single thing on campus, off campus. Like ASU has five different whatever, like ASU West and East and Polytechnic and all. Mm. And they all have different dining halls. 
And yeah. then also living in a dorm, each dorm is different as far as what you're allowed to be in there, what access they have, if they have a kitchen, if they have to, yeah. like, it's just so, there's so many permutations of what can happen to you when you go to college. So there's a couple websites, like Spoken is one that we talked about earlier that mentioned uh, U of A, but um, G Free Friends is another one that allows kids to rate their universities, but even kids within the same university will have totally different experiences based on, you know, what their needs are, if they're gluten-free and dairy-free versus just gluten-free or what dining hall they live in, Mm -hmm. if they're on campus, off campus, what dorm. I mean, it's just like, it is truly like, you're going to have to like, just live it and see what you've got to do to adjust to it. Well, and even just having like, you know, vegan options. When I went to go say goodbye to my daughter, when I left, she had, she was sitting with her friends eating and I looked at her plate and she had, like it, it looked like fried tofu squares or like air fried tofu squares on her plate. I'm like, they have that here. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, that's amazing. That's so, so hip of them, you know, and let's, uh, let's not forget that her roommate who's gluten-free had to enjoy some amazing GF Jules muffins that you yes. hand delivered to her. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah. And I thought it was so funny though, because I, you know, I had this whole big container of muffins and, you know, I travel with these muffins. That's my thing, right? I just, I I call them my travel muffins because they stay fresh for five or six days. You don't have to refrigerate them. You don't, you know, whatever, you just eat them right out of the bag or out of the Tupperware. But I guess that's just so different from other gluten-free stuff that people aren't used to that. And so I like, I left her this big Tupperware full of muffins and I came back the next day. I'm like, where are the muffins? Because I was hungry. I was going to steal one. And she's like, oh, they're in the refrigerator. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Put them in the refrigerator. They're going to get dried out. <laughs> like, yeah. Because she just thought that's what you had to do because gluten-free stuff is going to be bad. And you have to put it in the refrigerator. And then you have to reheat it. And then whatever. And I was like, all right. Not with my stuff, okay? <laughs> just leave it out. <laughs> and then you don't have to microwave it. It's still going to be soft. But anyway, she doesn't know me yet. She will. But she will. She will. <laughs> Every time you go there, are you going to bring her a different GF Jewels product? That's right. Like today I made you a baguette. I know. I know. It's funny. And we you have to get some baguettes. stuff though. Like, um, I have to. I have to get the girls some mixing bowls and some stuff because they want to. They want to make you know cookies and and the I love pancake mix and you know stuff like that. So I just have to get them some mixing bowls. Get them a KitchenAid because they have enough storage space for it. Oh my god, they totally have enough storage space for a, a stand <laughs> mixer. Make, make Isn't that crazy? I don't know. I, oh. I, I told you they're going to be spoiled, but yeah, they are. I don't know. So uh, we wanted to also talk about amazing GF Jewels mixes on a more national scale because Miss Jewels has been nominated once again. For one million different awards for the annual mm. uh, Gluten Free Buyers Guide Gluten Free Awards, Do yes. you have the list up because you have a lot. Yeah, they're every year they they seem to come up with new categories, but they then do. there's I know which is great because I mean a lot of times you know there aren't categories for some of my stuff, so I was happy about it. But I yeah, I was so excited this year. There's um, let's see, there's uh. Bread mix, cake mix, cookie mix, cornbread mix, muffin mix, waffle, pancake waffle mix, pizza crust mix is a write in because they have pizza, but they don't have a they don't have a they don't have a a pizza mix. So we're asking people to write that in. There's not a lot of good pizza mix. (laughs) (laughs) No, there's not. Um, Sugar cookie mix, though. That was an ad. They've added that one, I think, this year. I don't think there used to be a sugar cookie mix. I don't think so. I think there was just a cookie mix. Yeah, the cookie mix. So all of those were nominated this year. And then, um, of course, the flour, which I'm always, like, so grateful that that's nominated. Because the, the, the 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 thing about this that always just makes me so excited is that, you know, my company is a very little company. I mean, it's it's a woman owned, you know, tiny little company. Oh my god, it's woman owned. Yes, 
It's a woman-owned company. Did you not know that? I should have told you this earlier. But it's a small little online company. And most people still haven't heard of it. And we're not on store shelves all over the country, you know, next to these big brands. And so when we're nominated for these awards, it always just is such an honor to me that, you know, my customers and fans take the time to nominate and vote. And we win, you know, a lot of the the categories, even though we're not these big brands with big ad budgets and we're not on store shelves and most people still haven't heard of it. So it means that our customers care and love and are passionate about, about my products enough to take the time to do it. And that's that's what means so much to me. So, yeah. So yeah, those are, those are, um, they were all nominated. And then of course, um, a couple of my books and my blog. So I'm, I'm excited. Like, Hey, if I win anything, I'm stoked. Right. And so excited. And, and what's most relevant for this, um, this, uh, genre that we're in right now is that you had me at eat podcast is nominated, of course, because it is the best gluten-free podcast. Because it's just us talking about things that we love. Yes, it is the best <laughs> Because us. we're fun and because we talk about relevant things. We're woman-owned. We, and we're woman-owned. We should have told you guys that uh, earlier. We, we should have told you. Owned. There are yes. some really great, like, so uh, my favorite, like, oh, my God, there's gluten-free bagel category, gluten-free beer mm-hmm. brand. Yes. Um, yes. So I don't, the gluten-free beer brand always mystifies me because why aren't there more in that category. Yeah. Great anyway. question. I put Holiday on there. And I know that you have your favorites from, you have Arox that you like. Yeah, but it's not national. So I understand yeah, that like, you can't order that anywhere, yeah. you know? So, but I love Arox, but yeah, Ghostfish, um, Glutenberg, Holly Daily, like, yeah, I mean, there's there's some yeah. ground break, There's some really really amazing gluten free beers out there, and Arox is amazing. It's just it's a very regional yeah. beer. I hope that it gets more distribution. And soon. Ghost Fish isn't even on here, which I think is and really Ghost interesting. Fish is to Wild. me, so to good. me, they have some of the most unique so flavors. Good. And nobody knows that they're gluten free when you their taste cranberry them. hibiscus goze. Oh my god. That's the thing is why I love going to Seattle is because I come home with approximately 100 pounds of gluten-free beer because I will take two empty suitcases and stuff them full because I cannot get them in Phoenix. So I just buy the most wild kinds. Yeah. Like we did the ghost pepper or Seosin or Seosan or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. So Matt and his friend who's Crohn, who has Crohn's and is also gluten-free, um, they love trying all the different ones yeah. that I bring home from Seattle. Um, yeah. So best gluten-free blog, I will make the caveat we're both nominated. Yes. And I think that you absolutely need to vote for Jules because her blog <laughs> is um, actually worthwhile. And I haven't updated mine in two years, but it's the thought that counts for it anyone who does vote for me. But or if you have two split- email addresses, you can vote for both of us. <laughs> I, would, I would honestly hate to split the votes because I do want Jules to win. Um, but again, very uh, yeah. Oh, it's because I'm a good friend. Uh, so another reason why I think that this the gluten free words are really cool is that let's say you're going in because you're like okay I'm going to go vote for you have me eat podcast because I'm going to do them a solid and whatever right and and so you go in there and you're like oh wait there's there's a brand I've never heard of in the gluten free mm-hmm. whatever category and so you're you're learning about other gluten free foods yeah. and and things that are out there that you didn't know were out there and so you're you're being educated as a gluten free consumer about what other consumers think are really awesome products and then once this comes out and the the votes are being tallied and once the winners are chosen this is all published in a book that you can then purchase or download and it's a reasonable price but it's basically mm-hmm. what the community has voted is these are our favorites. And it has a big listing of all kinds of different things in different categories. And you as a shopper because can then say, I feel confident buying these things because enough people voted for them. Yeah, because they're not you're gonna waste your money on yeah. these products because enough people have said that they actually do taste good. So it's a really great service that they're doing and it's fun to, you know, to participate in it. It's we're honored to be nominated no matter, you know, whether we win or not for anything. Um, but it's really kind of a, and it's good for everybody all around. 
It does. A couple of other ones I want to point out is number 31, which is best frozen pancake or waffle. I'm telling you, low pass point, they're, they're blueberry waffles that are frozen. Oh my God, they are my favorite. And then best gluten-free granola. The only one on here that I believe has purity protocol oats is the Zigo Organic Oats, which is their muesli. And I love, I love their oats. I love their muesli. I love whatever they do. Obviously, Colleen and I are buds and Zigo's hey, an wait. amazing company. Is that woman owned? It's also woman owned. It's also a B Corp. She's great. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, and then on here, um, Taste Republic. I put in there a dairy free tortellini slash tortelloni mm -hmm. as for best gluten free pasta because oh my god, yeah, come we, on. yeah, so good. We had that at Expo, so that was cool. Oh my god! And then I am nominated for best gluten free personality. Yes, you and are. There are a lot of other big personalities on there, but if nobody's you as for big me, as you are, if your you want personality to vote for me, fills the room. Number yes. 45. Please, please vote, for vote for Erica. Me. That would be yes. great. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's what I wanted to call your attention to. And I believe, I don't even see where podcast is on it, but we already talked about that. It's very important for uh, you to. It's number 49. 49. There are mm -hmm. 62, 62 different categories that you can vote for. So what was wild is that I made Matt take his own survey. And like the whole time he's like, mm -hmm, best sugar cookie mix. Okay. Okay. We like jewels, right? I'm like, yes. And he's like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> best bagel. Hmm. Well, I like these and like, well, those were nominated. So you have to have a second choice. It's like, okay. So he's been getting like really good at recognizing good. like what brand is what. So yeah. Yeah, fun take. Well, and speaking of the fact that you are such an enormous gluten free personality and you should win for best gluten free personality, you were also nominated for something else, Erica, weren't you? Wild. It's more of like a patient advocate community um, versus a gluten free blogging community. So I'm happy to be part of the patient advocacy community and just um, work for other brands and help them build their online influences, but also you'll see me like at Digestive Disease Week and all these other events, you know, advocating for people with IBS, people with celiac disease, and just getting to have a one-on-one -on -one communication and connection with your gastroenterologist and getting those colonoscopies because we're all at that age now. Um, so Jules and I collect them like we're getting a punch card where we get the 10th one yeah. free, but Unfortunately, it's not free. Yeah. If you have any questions about getting your colonoscopy, <laughs> yeah. feel free to DM Erica or me. We'll give you We'd all to kinds of it. information about how to um, how to do that right or so wrong, it's, it's, as it were. It's really <laughs> nice to be able to be a resource for people who have like genuine concern about their bodies and be like, "Hey, I'm having issues here. Who do you recommend that I see?" Or like, "Do you have any?" background or can you point me to a resource for this? And I, I really, really enjoy that. And thankfully I am finally being nominated by the gastroenterology community as a whole, which is incredible because they're massive and they're full of doctors that are way smarter than I am. And they're finally seeing the validity and the need for patient advocates in the digestive disease yeah. community. Uh, so Helio, which is a journal, Helio Gastroenterology is like a journal that publishes all the major research, research updates um, for gastroenterology. They have awards every year and it's called the Disruptive Innovator Award. So like the, all the hot new doctor influencers of GI and it sounds when I'm talking about yeah. this to people, they're like, this is a thing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's a thing. Yeah. And, Have you been um, on medical Twitter? Oh my God. Med Twitter, <laughs> hashtag med Twitter. Um, so they have a patient advocate uh, or patient voice nomination. And this year I am nominated. I am like nominated with these patient advocates that are like mind blowingly incredible that like, I would, I can't even imagine. I mean, there's, there's, to be clear, there's absolutely no way that I am winning this. No way I have. I am like the Kentucky Derby horse that like tripped his way to number one to get into even to get into the Kentucky Derby like the odds are against me and I'm perfectly fine with that because it has been an honor just to be nominated with these amazing group of like five or six people that I'm with and it's just like wild so we had to like to promote to med twitter I'm like hi you may not know me but I talk uh, um, about celiac disease and I have like a book and I've been doing this for way too long and like hi <laughs> you want to meet me you know like let's be friends 
<laughs> so um, just getting nominated and having that exposure to the medical Twitter and medical online community for GIs has is, is been really, really huge and really cool. And it just kind of confirms the fact that like, this is where I want to be. This is where I need to be. And it's just nice. Yeah. Well, congratulations. That's, that Thanks. is a really cool honor. And we do hope that you win this. It won't happen. And, and I <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you so much. Not going to happen, but appreciate it. Um, just even the fact that like they had uh, video nominations that all the doctors watch and like my name was called and there was a picture of me and I'm like, oh my God, like I cried. I cried because like, it's great to be nominated for gluten-free stuff. It's fantastic. Yes. I love this community, but also like the medical community is a very different one. And I sometimes feel in the gluten-free community that we are being pushed out by TikTokers and people that just have viral reels and viral TikToks that we yeah. can't ever do. And I feel like I'm losing my voice and sometimes I get really sad about it. So this was a nice little like hype up to be like, all right, yep. keep doing what you're doing, girl. We got this. Yep. So it's lovely. Good. It's lovely. You know what, Erica? Yeah. Keep doing what you do, girl. Oh, thanks. I'm women don't. <laughs> You're woman owned. Yeah. Yes, you are. Your voice is woman owned. Yeah. So yeah, um, we will drop a link to the um, gluten free awards in mm -hmm. our liner notes. Um, it's too late to vote for Erica, sadly. It's but, okay. I'm um, not going to win ho anyway. It's hopefully, cool. We're good. some of you have already voted, like I did. Um, and we will all stay tuned for October to see if Erica wins. Yeah. Well, we may not go there. Uh, because <laughs> it is announced in uh, at the American College of Gastroenterology event, which is um, this year, oddly enough, in Canada, because apparently in the American College of Gastroenterology also means North American College. So yes. I'm like, Canada? Oh, that means I have to have a passport. So when I really figured out that I had to go, I was like, okay, I need to get a passport appointment. Well, those are um, not available. I looked everywhere in my state. <laughs> And everyone's like, go to the expedited passport place in Tucson. I'm like, who doesn't need an excuse to go to Tucson, right? Well, you can only go there if you're traveling within 14 days. And I'm like, well, I'm not. It's like 12 weeks away. So I got a passport appointment. I got there and she's like, you're really pushing it. And I'm like, lady, don't you think I know that? Like, don't you think I wish I could have gotten in the second that I knew that I needed to have a passport? Like, come on. So... We will see if I get it, it like it's not, the day it's not before me, it comes. It's you problem at the passport office, but yes. This is a federal they, government they problem. <sighs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. And they don't have the best um, customer service bedside manner, let's just say. I'm just happy that like they give you a website to be like, you can check on your passport. So like yeah. it actually was like, it has been received and we're working on it. But like well, the fact good. that. I may not go to Canada because I don't know when my passport's going to get here. It's like a real cliffhanger for what, yeah. We, yeah, what we're going to do for October. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. It'll all work out. It, as yeah. my daughter says, it's fine. Everything's fine. It's fine. Everything's <laughs> fine as the fire flames are around you and you're just yeah, sitting on a cup exactly. of hot coffee. Um, so yeah, it's so all we'll see about, good. We'll see about that. But we have plenty of things to do until October, so we'll keep you updated. I yes. know that Jules and I have several things in September and a couple of things in October that we're actually going to see each other in to mm -hmm. the season to hang out with uh, with Jules uh, in different places across the country. So yes, we have things to do. We have things to do. So stay tuned to next week at You Had Me Eat. Again, welcome back to season two. Please, if you enjoy this podcast, continue to share it with your friends. Um, we would like to meet and get to know every single one of you. Uh, we have plenty of podcast episodes for you to listen to uh, previously. If you're like, oh, my God, I cannot get enough of these two women-owned women talking about <laughs> their awards. I love it. And their times <laughs> in college when they didn't have toaster ovens. Um, so, yes, exactly. please, please come back next week for another episode if you have me to eat. Like and subscribe and all of those fun things. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye.